Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51 Percenters show about women reshaping our world. In this special edition, we take a look at how feminism is portrayed in art. We meet a young French performance artist who, in her own words, deconstructs gender stereotypes so as to reconstruct a powerful story of femininity. And we also head to the Moroccan city of Rabat, which is holding its first ever women-only biennale. But joining me now in the studio is Dr Amy Tobin, who's an art historian at the University of Cambridge and also author of The Art Feminism. Thank you so much for your time, Amy. Let me start by asking you, how has feminism shaped modern art? Well, I suppose feminism has shaped modern art in that it's brought more women into the history of art, but it's also really posed a lot of questions about the representation of women and the representation of other people too. So it's had a fundamental impact, I think, on modernity. But we've talked a lot on this show about the lack of representation in art movements and certainly in um, when you look back at art history. Mm -hmm. So therefore... Has the art world failed women? And more importantly, is it continuing to fail women? I mean, historically, it's absolutely failed women as artists. But I do think that has changed considerably in the last decade, especially. But, you know, this is slow progress. There are still many ways in which women artists are slighted or given a less uh, rich slice of the pie. Um, but, you know, I think we also have to look beyond the art world um, for where we look at art and where we see art because it can happen elsewhere too. Now, back in the 1980s, a group called Guerrilla Girls uh, posed a striking question in their own work. It was, do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? Of course, they're referring to the Metropolitan Museum in New York because it then went on to read that less than 5% of the artists in modern art sections are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. Mm -hmm. That is over 30 years ago. So has much changed since then, Amy? Well, you know, what they're referring to there is this massive discrepancy between the makers of art and those who were represented in artworks. Um, that hasn't changed, you know, tremendously in these historic collections because it's hard to recover the work of historic artists. However, these curators and directors are often feminists themselves now, and they're really rethinking how to talk about those representations of women, particularly when they're maybe negative or violent, like, for instance, the rape of Europa or other scenes from mythology. So I think we are seeing change. But having said that, the art world is still very much dominated by men, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is dominated by men. But there are many strong women now leading museums, major museums, as well as curators who are putting on fantastic shows. I mean, over the last few years, there's been women and women uh, artist shows in many major museums. However, we have to really keep up this work. We can't celebrate women for a year and then expect things to change. And there are also many more women artists, aren't there? There are, I think. I mean, I think there have always been women artists, but it's exactly as you're, you're sort of suggesting. These artists haven't been given adequate attention, criticism, exhibitions, so they fall out of art history. And that's what we really need to, to stop. And that's about giving women support as artists. Amy, let's just pause there for a second because there are now a new generation of women artists who have no fear in expressing feminist attitudes through their work, such as Paris-based Clemence Vazard, who uses performance art and multiple media to question our images of women this report by Florence Gaillard and Luke Schrago. Nearly naked and in total silence, a woman draws the outline of her own body in lipstick. The parallel to a crime scene is unmistakable. This is a part of Sois belle et toi, be pretty and shut up, Clemence Vazard's way of taking on the injunction of beauty on women, a violent constraint as physical as it is psychological. Her performance over, she comes out of character to explain the outline of the mouth. The tape prevents me from expressing myself. It's a tool of oppression that prevents me not just from expressing myself, but my identity and of doing so clearly. When she performs in public, Vazar makes the audience a part of her work. 
drawing prison bars on their hands, implicating the public at large. She taught herself across multiple media, starting out recording the accounts of women who'd been harassed and destructing their portraits in collage. I have this rage within myself and this curiosity towards others. I want to be at the centre of the interaction, the confrontation, of the connection between the two. The idea of believing another person, of listening to someone, is necessary in society today. Another of her installations, this dressing table and mirror. It triggers a 55-minute video once someone sits down. That key duration, the average time that women spend every day getting ready in the same way, and something to which Vazar wants to draw attention. What I want to say isn't stop using makeup and taking care of your appearance. No, it's express your originality, have confidence in yourself, in who you are, rather than seeking refuge in a norm of representation. Given recent trends like hashtag me too, Vazar's work is very much a part of the current zeitgeist, with shows in London and New York already, and another to follow soon in Paris. And watching that report with me is Dr Amy Tobin, who's an art historian at the University of Cambridge and also author of The Art of Feminism. Now, seeing Clemence Vazard there, I have to ask you, is it just women who depict feminism in art? Oh, that's a tough question. I would say no. I, I think there are male artists who um, are feminists, have a feminist politics. But I would say that, you know, the work of women and women's kind of contribution to feminism is really crucial. What would be, in your opinion, the best examples of modern feminist art? Um, well, I suppose a, a modern feminist art should be diverse. So it can never be just one artist or one way of working. But I'd hope that a modern feminism could talk about race, sexuality, gender identity, so, you know, non-binary identity as well as binary identity. Um, I think some of the key artists that uh, we're sort of interested in now happen to be older women, and having that sort of um, narrative around ageing and things that are very invisible in culture are really important for modern feminist art. Which leads me to my next question. Is feminist art merely a product of the West? Well, that's a good question. I think feminism has a specific, um, it's often very specific to its locality. And some women are not happy to use the word feminism in different contexts because it has such a specific meaning for them. And a negative context in some places, doesn't it? It does, it does. But I don't think that that stops us from having points of solidarity with other movements around gender equality. So I think it's important to be very aware of that, but to still seek kind of friendships and, and collaborations. Amy Tobin, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you for your time. No and the Moroccan city of Rabat has been holding its first ever female Biennale, displaying works solely by women. James Wilson has more. In Rabat, the capital of Morocco, women artists have been flocking for a unique event, the city's first all-female art Biennale. The curator, Abdel Kader Damani, is a man, but he has a fundamentally feminist philosophy. That is that you can't change history's preference for male artists, but you can change modern society. And you can only do so by promoting female artists. There are only women at the international exhibition for a very simple reason. And that is that we need to revisit our relationship to create a balance and equality in the history of art simply because the history of art is essentially masculine. It's what we read in books, that's what we're looking at, and so there's an attempt by the Rabat Biennale to fix that element in history. Over 60 female artists from 27 countries feature in the exhibit, and the hope is to give Arabic-speaking artists some kind of international exposure. All the artists work in a variety of media, ranging from architecture, paint, to choreography. But most share a common goal, 
They want to further female representation in the art world. Women have been doing art for a long time, but they're not necessarily in the history of art as written history. I think it's very important to make a Biennale of contemporary art that's dedicated to women. And throughout the exhibition, the different pieces invoke a variety of themes, the body, death and revolution all among them. Not everyone agrees, however, that women have been hard done by in the Arab art world. Gaida Arma believes the lack of money has created a more level playing field. In the Arab world, the art is not really associated to money, it's really associated to art and what can we offer to the society. And the, the, the market is not as big as in the Western world. And that's why uh, in the Arab world, uh, the place of uh, being a male artist or, or a female artist, it doesn't matter uh, which gender you are. The Rabbit Biennale is funded by the non-profit organisation National Foundation of Museums in Morocco. It is being held at the Mohammed VI Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art and is due to run until December the 18th. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.